time for the news. That's right, folks. Getting ready to get back on my J-O-B. And uh, speaking of J-O-Bs, here we, got, we have actor Jaleel White and premier black celebrity share a spotlight with exceptional youth in PBS special, Not All Lost. And not all is lost because I, I had people uh, sidebar here that was asking me about my... Uh, uh, Ask me about my my t-shirt where I got my t-shirt from I'm like yeah okay let me uh, tell you where you got where you can where you can hook it up and uh, first of all I'm gonna show you this this one I got I got a couple of them this one here which is the one with the uh, me President Obama right there and the DC dunce. Get under my foot, Satan. There he is. Satan under my foot. So we got uh you can go to uh Sandardesi at gmail.com or, or it might be Sandardesi. I let's see, I have to ask them how to pronounce that. But let's just let's say Sandar DC. I'm gonna spell it for you. S A N D A R D E S I at gmail.com. That's S A N D A R D E S I at gmail.com. And you can contact them uh and, and they can give you all the information on on these uh on these particular shirts because they have they have the mold, the model, and the uh everything for that. So if you want to get them, they got them in, in every size, color, whatever. You know, whatever t-shirt color. I, I prefer to have mine on the black t-shirt. And uh, go to sandardc uh, at gmail.com. All right. Back to the show. Oscar-nominated producer teams with PBS, nonprofit organizations, the Black Hollywood Education and Resource Center, and films with the purpose to debut celebrity-driven reality-based stories of inspirational youth. During Black History Month 2020, PBS airs a special program, Not All Lost. This half-hour reality-based program is designed to provide inspirational profiles of today's youth, notably those of color that dispel stereotypes often attached to them. <coughs> Gotta ring the bell on that one. Not All Lost sh shines light on the flip side of a coin that is too often lands on the negative. It's refreshing to see the positive side up, states Glenn uh, Terman. You remember him? He used to be on on uh, that that Bill Cosby show when the kids were in college. He did several shows, several other t TV shows. And you got Jaleel White from uh, Family Matters. Uh, Glenn Terman was from like Different World, the t Cosby show, D Different World, and I think he played the uh, what was it like? like the military guy or something. I think he might have been head of the ROTC or something. Anyway, the show spotlights inspirational youth, not all academically or athletically exceptional. Many are just determined to someday have a normal adult life by whatever uh, po positive means necessary. It focuses on their determination to achieve success despite being faced with unfavorable life circumstances and iterating the obstacles that they had to encounter along the way, such as uh, steering clear of gangs, drugs, and peer pressure. There are hundreds of stories about young people of color succeeding in life despite difficult situations. Not All Lost allows us the opportunity to share these stories with the world, says David Massey, uh, Oscar-nominated producer. The program features profiles of Peyton Polk, a legally blind student attending UCLA, Brian Merriweather, the Horse Whisperer, and Marcus Johnson, master scuba diver turned investment advisor, Principal uh, Johnson, uh, Principal Johnson Capital. The show is hosted by actor Jaleel White. Ce celebrity interviews and mentors are uh, Kim Whitley, uh, actress, writer, comedian, young and hungry, uh, James Pickens Jr., actor of Grey's Anatomy, Glenn Turman. I just mentioned a little while ago, Nick Cannon, 
uh, and, this, and uh, this program provides truthful accounts using real people with the intent of filling the void for hunger uh, of affirmation, encouraging stories of today's young youth and these young adults. And this, uh, this, highlight, this highlighted individuals exemplify that they are not all lost. So let's see. You can you can catch that today. As a matter of fact, it might be on right now. Certain certain spots you can catch it today at uh, three three thirty p.m. on PBS, and you can also catch it Wednesday, the twenty sixth, February twenty sixth, at two p.m. So additional information you can go to www.bherc.org. That's www.bhe rc.org and uh yeah that's pretty cool try to try to hook that up we'll do another quick little story right right fast here and then i'm gonna get back into my uh uh history lesson for black history month all charges dismissed against 15 men black men who were framed by chicago police chicago illinois the illinois cook cook county state's attorney in Illinois has dropped all charges against 15 men who combined had 18 convictions all of them were convicted in 2003 to 2008 for drugs crime drug crimes which they say the local police framed them for the men all african-american alleged former police sergeant Rock, uh, Ronald Watts and his team of officers planted the drugs on them and then falsified police reports Leonard Gibson one of the men exonerated told Reporters that watch threaten them if they du didn't pay him so-called protection tax. Gibson comments, "If you're gonna pay, if you're not gonna pay Watts, you're going to jail." And, and um, Gibson did serve two years in jail. He says when he was released from prison, Watts tried again to put another case on him. Josh Joshua Teffler of the Exoneration Project at the uh, University of Chicago says that the officers targeted low-income black men who lived on the south side. He even said that others in command at the Chicago Police Department knew what was going on but did nothing to stop it. The corruption was covered up by the highest levels of the Chicago Police Department, Tefla said. It was swept under the rug. Meanwhile, the 15 men and Tefla all feel that justice has not been fully served. Sergeant Watson and another officer were convicted served less than three years and are now free. Even worse, as many as seven officers were never charged and are still working on the force. Wow. So I'm going to go back. That's That happened in Chicago, and I'm going to go back here to uh, uh, my list. I'm going to go back to my list of black inventors, black inventors and... Uh, uh, Scientists. Let's see where did I leave off at? These, I think I finished the D's. All right. Can I skip Ellis? Did I finish? I think I finished it. What did those? Okay. Well, I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna start off in the G's here. Where's a couple of F's? So let me do them. Start off in F. So Lloyd Ferguson. These these are this is a list of of black African American scientists and inventors of in the United States here. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start on on the F's. And that's Lloyd Ferguson, and he's a chemist and educator, chemistry doctorate first received in 1943. Roland Fryer, economist, social scientist, inequality studies. Sylvester Gates, theoretical physicist, worked on uh, supersymmetry, supergravity, and superstring theory. Sarah Good. Oh, okay. I, I did that those yesterday, so I think I need to start on the H's here. Uh, James Harris, co-discovered root the 40 of element, element 104, and Dubnium, element 105, that's two elements that this, uh, that this black man, James Harris, discovered at, at Lawrence Livermore Laboratory. Walter Watkins, a scientist, inventor at Bell Laboratories. 
So if you know if you don't know what Bell is, Bell was like one of the, the uh Bell, Alexander Graham Bell was one was he was uh actually he really wasn't anything, but what he was, he was smart and he had all these people that were that worked for him that were actually smart. They would create inventions and what he would do is that since they was working for him, he would he would take the credit for it. And uh he did it. Uh let's see. That was Graham Alexander Graham Bell did it, and uh, um, uh, uh, several other other so-called uh, white inventor, inventors stole a lot of people's a lot of people's uh, ideas and claim claim credit for it. He was just one of them. And uh, let's see, Kerry Holly, research computer scientist at IBM, co-creator of service-oriented modeling and, and architecture. S S O M A and the service integration ma uh, maturity model. John Jackson, electrical engineer, inventor, co-inventor, co-inventor of the uh, imaging X-ray spectrometer, and that's the X-ray machine. Now I told you uh, the, in the last episode of the person that was the inventor. This was the co-inventor of the imaging X-ray uh, machine. Mary Jackson, mathematician, aerospace engineer, first. NASA's first black female engineer. Now she, Mary Jackson, I'm gonna do have to do a little more research on her because she may have been uh, one of the ladies that was in that in the, in that uh, movie that that well it was it was a true story about the the women uh, uh, that were instrumental in doing all the calculations for the NASA space space program or the ones that went to the moon. So that was a that was a true story, and I think it was called Hidden Faces or something like that. But uh, okay, anyway, one of my favorites here, Dr. Shirley Jackson, physicist, and she helped develop technologies leading to the invention of the touch tone telephone, portable fax, solar cells, fiber optic cables, and technology enabling caller ID and call waiting. However, in a recent article from MIT. Uh, uh, they try to they try to say some, some to the to the negative on that. However, she holds a lot of patents. And uh, going on to the next one, Eric Jarvis, neurobiologist, the Duke New University neuroscience uh, bird song studies. And I'm gonna stop here on Thomas Jennings, inventor, first African American to be granted a patent for a dry cleaning process called dry scouring. Stop right there. And that is Thomas Jennings, the person that invented dry cleaning. Dry cleaning, when you take it close to the cleaners, he, he was the one that invented dry cleaning. So we got a lot of inventions, folks, and we got a lot of, a lot of good things that we've done. And we got more to come. KP's video news, baby. You know what time it is. Time for that. Peace.